everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I'm going to be revising meiosis with you. Now you might have already seen my meiosis video that I've had on YouTube for quite a few years now covering the process, focusing on crossing over and independent segregation because that has had hundreds of thousands of views so you've probably seen that one but the reason I'm doing this revision video is that is one of my most watched topic specific videos which tells me you probably need a bit of extra help with meiosis. So today I'm going to revise meiosis with you because if you're in year 12 you've learned this topic already probably and you might have a test coming up and if you're in year 13 you need to know this for your mock exams. So in this video I'm going to go over some of the key concepts again making it mark scheme specific doing a range of diagrams as well to try and help you visually be able to understand what's happening in these processes more because I think a lot of the time students struggle with the understanding stage with meiosis so then they can't get onto the remembering bit and they struggle on the exam questions. So we're going to be going through understanding meiosis, looking at the key processes and also I'm going to be going through a few of the strategies to help you to remember it as well. So let's jump into understanding meiosis, one of the types of cell division that you need to know for A-level biology. Let's recap the information first to make sure you do understand meiosis. Now I am going to be doing this mark scheme specific for AQA there is overlap between all the exam boards because meiosis is meiosis no matter what exam board you do you just might need to know it in different levels of detail for different specs so do cross reference this with your spec if you don't take AQA. So to begin with meiosis is a special type of cell division where you start with one parent cell you have two rounds of division and that results in four daughter cells which are the gametes. Gametes meaning sex cells, so egg cell and sperm cell in humans, but that could be egg cell and pollen in plants. In meiosis, you go from having a diploid parent cell. Diploid means you have two copies of every chromosome. So within the word diploid, D-I, di means two. So you have two copies of every chromosome. So for humans, our diploid number of chromosomes is 46 because we have 23 pairs. Meiosis results in four four haploid cells. Haploid means one copy of each chromosome. So for humans, our haploid number is 23 because we no longer have the pairs, but you still have one copy of every chromosome. So often you'll see diploid represented as 2n and haploid represented as n. 2n referring to the fact that you have two copies of every chromosome, n referring to the fact that you have one copy of every chromosome. Now this is different to mitosis cell division vision because that goes from a diploid parent cell to a diploid daughter cell and that's the term used for the cell that's created and that's because you only have one round of division so you go from having one parent cell to two daughter cells but you still have two copies of each chromosome. So now let's go into some of the key processes. For AQA you do not need to know what happens in every single stage of meiosis. You don't need to know what's happening in prophase one, metaphase phase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then again in the second round of division, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. And the reason for that is you actually learn what happens in every single stage in mitosis, so they don't get you to learn it again for meiosis. Instead, you just have to learn some of the key differences, which is what introduces the variation in the gametes. So meiosis creates genetically different cells, whereas mitosis creates genetically identical cells. And the two processes in meiosis that result in you having genetically different gametes or daughter cells are crossing over and independent segregation. So for AQA, that is the key focus for meiosis. It's knowing that crossing over and independent segregation both happen in the first round of division, also known as meiosis one, but you need to know the details of each process. So that's where I'm gonna do some diagrams now to help you get your head around it. So let's focus on these two processes that drive genetic variation in meiosis. First up is independent segregation. In meiosis one, homologous chromosomes, which by the way, that means two chromosomes that are the same size, shape, and have exactly the same genes, but they might not have the same alleles. So these homologous chromosomes line up randomly opposite their pair at the equator. Whether the paternal or maternal chromosome goes to one side 
side or the other of the equator is completely random. And that means the combinations of chromosomes in the daughter cells are also random. And this is one way that you get a huge variety of genetic possibilities in the gametes. And there is actually a mathematical way to calculate this, which does come up sometimes as a question. So what you would need to do to work out how many different possible gametes can be made based on the number of chromosomes that that particular species has is two to the power of n. The reason it's two is because we have homologous pairs of chromosomes, so it's a diploid cell, and the n stands for how many chromosomes you have. So for humans, that would be two to the power of 23 because we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if we then do two to the power of 23, this results in over 8.4 million different combinations of chromosomes in the gametes. That's a lot of variety in terms of how many different gametes could be produced just from independent segregation alone. And that is why brothers and sisters, or I should actually say biological brothers, biological sisters don't look identical to each other, unless they're identical twins, but they can look very similar or actually quite different because it depends on the combination of the different chromosomes they had in the gametes. Process number two is crossing over. So let's take a look. Crossing over happens during prophase one of meiosis. Homologous chromosomes come together and exchange pieces of chromatids. So this is happening almost simultaneously to the independent segregation. So you have those homologous pairs lining up at the equator. So although I said prophase one, it's kind of prophase one blending into metaphase one. And they form what's known as a bivalence. And that's what we call it when the two pairs or the homologous pair of chromosomes are lined up at the equator. Now, when those homologous chromosomes are lined up next to each other in that bivalence, the chromatids of the different chromosomes, or in other words, the non-sister chromatids, can actually cross over, become twisted and tangled, and then sometimes actually break off and exchange that section of the non-sister chromatids. And as a result, you now have a recombined chromatid on both of those chromosomes. This results in new combinations of alleles in the gametes. And therefore, it's another way of increasing genetic diversity. So this is a bit like shuffling a deck of cards when the chromatids break and rejoin, and they create these new combinations of alleles in the gametes. Now, I do want to point out crossing over doesn't happen every single time. It's actually quite rare. And that becomes relevant when you learn inheritance in year 13. So crossing over is rare, but if it does happen, it introduces new combinations of alleles in the gametes. Okay, let me show you a quick overview then of how this all links together. Now, as I said, you don't actually have to remember every single stage of what happens in meiosis for AQA, but I am going to do this diagram demonstrating from start to finish what happens, showing when the independent segregation and crossing over occurs to give you the overview so hopefully you can better understand the topic. Let's break down the the stages of meiosis. We have two key divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two, which I'm going to quickly go through now with these diagrams. In meiosis one, this is when homologous chromosomes line up in pairs at the equator, and then the homologous chromosomes are separated into two new cells. That is the stage when independent segregation happens and sometimes crossing over, but as I said, crossing over is rare. In the second round of division, also known as meiosis two, you then have the chromosomes lining up in single file at the equator and the spindle fibers will attach to the centromeres, split them apart and in this way the sister chromatids are separated to either pole and are finally separated just like you see happening in mitosis but remember we now have haploid cells at this stage so the result is four genetically different haploid daughter cells. Now at this point I do want to point out something that's quite particular to AQ in terms of exam questions. In your specification, it states you should be able to identify where meiosis is happening in an unfamiliar life cycle. Now, what that means is for some organisms, meiosis isn't the cell division that is used to go from a diploid cell to making gametes. Sometimes it happens at another point in the life cycle. So the key thing is meiosis involves going from a diploid parent cell whatever that parent cell may be, into a haploid daughter cell. 
and you should have four haploid daughter cells. So if you're given a life cycle, which means you'll have different stages with arrows connecting the stages, showing you that life cycle for that organism, you need to look for on the diagram where it goes from being a diploid cell to a haploid cell, or they might present it as 2N becoming N. And that is where you'd label on meiosis is happening. Okay, now we've done our understanding, let's move on to remembering. So we're gonna have a go at some of the questions from my active recall workbook together now okay next we are going to have a go at testing can we remember the information using this page from my active recall workbook which is from the topic four section and this bits on meiosis so let's zoom in and have a go at these questions you can pause and test yourself now see could you fill in all of those gaps i'm going to go straight into it having a go genetic variation can be introduced in a variety of ways such as during something cell division something and the random something of gametes so this is asking us for three ways that genetic variation can be introduced that isn't directly linked to what we've done solely today but one of the parts is because we have meiosis cell division which we did cover today but the other ways you get variation are through mutations and then this is random fusion, or you could say fertilization of gamete. There we go. Meiosis cell division creates genetically something gametes. So genetically different. Unlike in mitosis, there are two nuclear divisions in this process, which results in four haploid daughter cells. Something N equals one copy of a chromosome. So that is the definition of haploid. Two N, two copies of a chromosome. That's the definition of diploid. The genetic differences are introduced by two key processes in meiosis. We now have to name them. So it would be our independent segregation and crossing over. So that's the first little bit, just testing the real basic knowledge. Can you remember that? If we go over to this bit, we've now got describe how crossing over introduces variation. And you could include a diagram to demonstrate a chiasma. Right, let's have a diagram then to demonstrate a chiasma first of all. So here's one of my homologous pairs. Here's the other. So I'm just gonna circle this bit and say that is a chiasma because it's where they cross over. If you've had a go at this bit then, um, you can check your answer. So I'm going to say occurs in meiosis one and it's when homologous chromosomes align at the equator. I'm gonna say non-sister chromatids twist, or at least I should say twist there, putting tension, the chromatid so it breaks and rejoins on another chromatid. But then the final thing is I'm gonna say is creates new combinations of alleles in gametes. This time we're given the diagram, so we're told to use the diagram and your knowledge to describe how independent segregation introduces variation. The start of this is gonna be quite similar. So I'm gonna say homologous chromosomes align. I'm gonna say opposite at the equator. And then I'm gonna say it's random, which side the maternal and paternal are. So then I'm going to say it, these separate into daughter cells and we get large possible combinations of chromosomes in the daughter cells. I'm actually going to add in here as well that it's two to the power of n. That's how you remember how many possible combinations there are. So that is our little testing of our knowledge of meiosis. We've got some of the key facts. We've got the two main processes that you need to know here as well. So now we've done that, let's have a go at a couple of my flashcards so you can see how you could test yourself on the key information. So next then, let's have a go at remembering some of the key information with the flashcards. Now the first one at the top is actually um, linked to 
creating synthesis, not this one. So we're gonna start here. We've got haploid, diploid, and meiosis. So you can pause now and test yourself. Can you remember the definition for haploid? Can you remember the definition for diploid? Can you remember the definition for meiosis, or a description at least? I'm gonna jump straight in. Haploid and diploid, this is what we talked about at the start of this video. And we said haploid is when you have one copy of each chromosome, which can be represented with the letter N. Diploid is when you have two copies of each chromosome, and that can be represented with the symbols 2N. So let's see for that one. We've got one copy of each chromosome in a cell and then diploid, two copies of each chromosome in a cell. Meiosis, so for this one, I would say it's a type of cell division. It involves two rounds of cell division or two divisions. You start with a diploid cell, you end up with four haploid cells, which are gametes and genetically different. So that's what I would say. Let's see what we've got. So cell division that creates genetically different gametes two nuclear divisions results in four haploid daughter cells. Good, so we covered all of that. Okay, then on this side, we've got independent segregation, crossing over gametes, and how does meiosis introduce variation? So for these ones, pause and have a go. I'm gonna go straight into it. And you can use my flashcards how I am here. I've just got it open in GoodNotes on my iPad, and I've put a sticky note to cover it on one side. So if you don't want to print and assemble, you can do it like that. Downside of that is it's hard to be able to track which you did and didn't know but I suppose you could easily just track it by doing a simple tick or cross and then you go back to the ones with crosses on but you can also print it out and shuffle. Independent segregation then. For this one, I would say it's in meiosis one, it's when the homologous pairs of chromosomes align at the equator, but it's random which side of the equator the paternal and maternal chromosomes align and therefore introduces genetic variation. So we've got homologous pairs of chromosomes. Oh, I can't remember if I said that just now or not, but homologous pairs of chromosomes randomly line up opposite each other at the equator of the cell. When they separate, it creates a large number of possible combinations of chromosomes in the daughter cells produced. Crossing over, so I would say this is when the homologous pairs of chromosomes align at the equator and the non-sister chromatids cross over, become tangled, that creates tension which can break off a section of the chromatid that can then swap to form a recombinant chromatid and this introduces new combinations of alleles in the gametes. So let's see. Homologous pairs of chromosomes line up opposite each other at the equator of meiosis one. Oh, we've even got a picture. Parts of the chromatids twists, break and recombine with another chromatid and it results in new combinations of alleles in the gametes. Gametes then, I'm gonna say these are sex cells. So for example, sperm and egg. So sex cell, sperm and egg. And then last one is, how does meiosis introduce variation? This is where actually having all on this one page is maybe a downside because I know already, independent segregation and crossing over. So those are our two for that one there. In fact, I suppose I should do a little round up. So that takes us to the end of the remembering part. We've gone through the active recall workbook, the flashcards, both of which are linked in the description so you can get yourself a copy for your revision. So the final part of your revision should now be doing exam question practice. And you can now go and get exam questions from my website for free. Have a look at either the assessment bundle and complete topic four, but just picking out the meiosis questions, or you can have a go at my end of topic tests. Again, it's topic four, but just have a go at the ones linked to meiosis. Make sure you do it in timed conditions and without your notes, ideally, because that's the best type of practice. And when you come to self-market, if you aren't sure how to accurately mark your answers, check out my video here on how to understand the mark schemes to make sure you know exactly how to self-mark your work. So that is it for today's revision lesson together on meiosis and a bit of a summary of all of the content. Hopefully that's helped you better understand the topic, know how to go about remembering the information now, and then where you can get access to those exam questions. Best of luck with any mock revision you have coming up. And although some of my mock sessions have now passed, there are still some of my live mock lessons that you can attend, which I'll link in the description below. And that is it. That is my last video before the Christmas break. So I won't actually be back now until the new year. Have a good break, everyone. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks.